Hi folks, um, this is our third lesson and this is distribution. Um, really, it's more multiplying. And you've seen this before when we did your polynomial unit. Um, when you have a number outside the bracket, you multiply the number by all the terms. That's the most important thing, is that you're multiplying it by all the terms inside, that leapfrog again. And we did this in the polynomial unit with monomials. So the nice thing about this is you've seen it before, but now we're just going to take it the next step further, and because we have an equal sign, we're going to solve. So nice and easy, we're going to leapfrog. So 6 times 5x gives me 30x, and then 6 times by a negative 3 gives me the minus 18. So we've done it in polynomials, super easy. Um, and it's, uh, it, then we're just going to solve our basic one or two step rules, depending on where we end up. I think it's going to be like a two-stepper. This one anyway. Okay, so distribute through the brackets. The word distribute just means multiply through the brackets. Sorry. It's weird writing and not talking. Um, so the word distribute, um, we'll use this a lot. It just means to take that coefficient and multiply it through the back brackets. It could be a monomial, but when I say distribute the negative 7, if I use that language, that means to multiply it through the brackets. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my negative 7 and I'm going to times it by x. So that's going to give me a negative 7x. And then I'm going to take my negative 7 and I'm going to times it by, and I treat this like it's a negative 3, even though it's a subtract 3. So negative 7 times a negative 3 is going to give me a plus a positive 21. I have to put that positive sign in there. I have to write that down as an add. And that's going to equal negative 7. So now this is just a three-step equation. Uh, no, two-step. Just a two-step because I don't have x's on both sides. So here we go. Um, I want, my x is already on the left, so I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to move the constants together. So it's a plus 21, so I'm going to subtract 21. If I do it on the left-hand side, I have to do it on the right-hand side. So I'm left with just my negative 7x equals a negative 28, because negative 7 subtracts seven, uh, 21 is negative 28. So we know that this means negative 7 times x, okay, so the opposite operation is going to be divide by a negative 7. We're going to divide by a negative 7 on this side. I'm running a room, so I'm just going to go over here. So x is equal to, because negative 7 divided by negative 7, we did this in our very first lesson, we know that that has a value of 1. And we don't have to write the 1 in front. If you want to, if that makes sense to you, please feel free to do that. Uh, negative 28 divided by negative 7 is going to give me a positive 4. So my answer is 1x equals 4, or you can just write x equals 4. I will accept both of those answers as perfectly correct. Okay, so we've got five examples to work through, and um, yeah, you're going to see Ooh, you're going to see it's going to get a little bit different, but if you trust your math, which I hope you all have built some skills, and you keep following the same rules, you're going to be awesome. Okay, so notice this time my 3 outside the bracket is on the right-hand side. No big deal. We're going to do the exact same thing. So, three, so I'm going to write down my 15 first. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times a negative 4 is going to be subtract 12. All right. So my x is on the right-hand side this time. Again, no big deal. It doesn't stress me out. I just need to get it alone. I want to isolate the variable. So the first thing I have to do is i got to get rid of this constant of negative 12. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So that's going to leave me with 3x. All right, so now I add 15 plus 12 gives me 27. Okay, now again, I need to isolate the variable, so I need to get rid of the coefficient of 3. So divide by 3, divide this side by 3. I'm left with 1x over here. I'm not writing the 1. Uh, 27 divided by 3 is 9, and that 
is my answer. Pretty easy peasy. So again, the word distribute just means to take that, that number outside the bracket and multiply it into just that bracket. And we'll go through, there's a couple examples that will show that a little bit better. So negative, the very first thing I do is I find that bracket and I'm going to multiply it through. So negative 5 by 10 is negative 50. Negative 5 by a positive 2x is going to be a negative 10x. And then my negative 30. So notice that my negative 5 only multiplies the bracket, nothing else. That's really important. So my variables on the left-hand side, I want to isolate my variable. So I'm going to add 50. I want to get rid of that constant. I'm going to add 50 over here. So I'm left with a negative 10x equals a positive 20. Now, I said this before, but it's really important that you remember that you take the sign. That sign has to come with it. it it's really easy to lose it. Um, so make sure that you, you pay attention to those little things. You don't want to lose a half mark or a full mark for something, not because you don't understand, but just because you were rushing or not paying attention. So get rid of the coefficients. So I'm going to divide by negative 10 divide by negative 10, so x is equal to a negative 2. Okay, so now these next examples, they still do the distribution, but they are, they're a little bit different. No big deal. Um, so, okay, there's the 3, and there's a bracket right after it. So I'm going to multiply the 3 in. So I'm going to have 3x plus 12. Hold on. I got another bracket here. No big deal. I multiply the 2 into its bracket. So I'm going to have 2x minus 2. All right. Now this becomes a three-step equation because I have x's on both sides. I'm not worried whether you know it's a one-step or a two-step or a three-step. What I want you to know is how to tackle it. I'm not worried about you knowing how many steps you have to do. I just want you to know how to tackle the math. So when you have x's on both sides, you've got to bring the x's all to one side and the constants to the other side. That's what you do. So um, like I said, habit, I always take my x's to the left hand side. That's just a habit. So I'm going to subtract 2x from this side because that will give me 0 right here. And then I subtract 2x from this side. So I have 12, oh geez Louise. Let's try again. I missed a whole step. 3 minus 2 leaves me with 1. I'm just going to write it as a single x. It's got that invisible coefficient of 1. Plus 12 equals a negative 2. All right, so I want to isolate that variable. So I've got to bring my constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 12 to get rid of it on this side. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So x is equal to a negative 14. I guess this was kind of like a two-step equation because this didn't have a coefficient on it, so we didn't need to divide anything out. But again, all equations are going to have something a little bit different in it. So trust your math. Follow your math. You're not always going to have to do exactly every step every time. You just got to do what the equation's asking you to do. Well, that's easier said than done, right? Um, okay, so this equation does something different. Um, three by the x and by the 1, so I'm going to have 3x plus 1. Now there's a subtract 5 on this side. It's not included in the bracket. Here, let me circle that with another color. Um, it's not included in the bracket, so you don't multiply it. You just simply bring that down. All right. Now, before I start moving sides, and you guys are like, oh, um, Ms. Scallion, there's x's on both sides. I've got to start moving x's. I like to simplify what's on each side first. So there's two constants here. So this is going to be 3x minus 4 equals 3x minus 2. Because positive 1 subtract 5 will give me a negative 4. Oh, I realize my notes just got very crooked. All right. So... This makes me think three-step equation. I'm going to subtract 3x 
from this side and I'm going to subtract 3x from this side. So I'm left with a negative 2 over here and holy smokes, this is gone. Uh, so that's weird. So now I'm left with a negative 4 equals a negative 2 and there's no variables left. What do we do? What you do in this case, if there's no variables left, you simply state no solution. Now here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You can't leave it blank. You can't walk away at that point because um, these negative 4 does not equal negative 2. So I'm going to draw the slash through the equal sign, which just means does not equal. And I have to write no solution. I need to know that you understand that this there's no solution to this one. Hmm. And that's it. Sometimes that happens. Uh, if there's no variables left, it's a no solution, but you have to state it. Let me write that down. Must state this. If you just walk away, um, I'm going to be like, oh, they don't understand that this question is one of the weird ones that doesn't have a solution. So I need you to state that. Okay, so the last one, again, a little bit different. Everything's always a little bit different. So I'm going to distribute the 5 through its bracket. Now notice the 5 is only backed up to this bracket right here. So that's where the 5 is getting distributed. So 5x plus 10. All right. So now here's the thing. I'm going to switch colors here for a second. The orange seems to turn up okay. So this is going to be a negative 6 being distributed through this bracket. So negative 6 times x gives me a minus 6x. And negative 6 times by a negative 3 gives me a plus 18. So even though we're talking positive negatives as I'm going through, um, I'm treating them like they're add and subtract signs. So I had to take the sign before it and I distributed it through its bracket. And then there's just this equals 4. Nothing's happening on the other side, so I'm just going to rewrite it. There's no math to be done over there. So before I start moving sides, I'm going to combine any like terms I can on the left-hand side. So we have a 5x minus 6x. So that's going to leave me with a negative 1 x. And you guys are like, Scallion, you never write one. Why are you writing one now? Well, it's a negative. And that um, I always like to put because of um, negatives are just a weird thing. And I find that that stands out to me more if I attach a number to it. Um, so I'm going to combine like terms here. So I have a plus 10 and a plus 18. So that's plus 28 equals 4. So my x's are on the left-hand side. There's, not, there's no x's on the right-hand side, so I don't have to move anything, but I do need to move this constant. So I'm going to subtract 28x. Oh, no, not 28x. Subtract 28. I'm going to subtract 28 over here, so I'm left with a negative 1x equals a negative 24. I don't want a negative x. I want a positive x, so I'm going to divide by negative 1 divide by negative 1, and x is equal to a positive 24. And that's my answer. So those are just um, distribution. So words I'm using, distribution means to multiply through the bracket. Isolate the variable means to get just a single one positive x. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, let me know.